This is your video on the clinical correlation of a friend in need is a friend indeed. First of all, if you look at Charles's blood partial pressures, you will note that nitrogen is actually in normal range. Please reference slide 13 from our external and internal respiration lecture. Normal values of oxygen are 75 to 100 millimeters of mercury. So his blood oxygen partial pressure is normal. CO2, you know from our acid base lecture, is normal from 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. What isn't normal is his carbon monoxide levels. How do you know that? You actually had to go to question two to answer that. We are told that Charles has 50% carbon monoxide poisoning and his partial pressure is 0.4. Using the math from your mini lab exam uh, for the first 20 pages or so of your first lab manual, you know how to do ratios. So if I look at his ratio, 50% and he has a partial pressure of 0.4 and normal levels of CO2 in blood, or sorry, not CO2, carbon monoxide, we're told is about 2%. So we need to solve for normal values. If I solve for X, I get 0 0.016. If I divide Charles's value, 0.4, by 0 0.016, I can see that Charles has 25% higher carbon monoxide values. That means out of the gases that we are given, carbon monoxide alone is the issue. How do we solve question two? We have to go to the graph. Here we see normal oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. And then below it, we see Charles. So Charles's oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, we see shifts to the left, and I'll address that later. The question says, under normal circumstances, what is the approximate percent saturation of hemoglobin by oxygen in normal arterial blood? That means we use this curve. And if I take 100 millimeters of mercury, if I take about 95 to 100 millimeters of mercury and draw it up, vertical line up until I hit the normal curve, and then draw a horizontal line over, I'm going to reach about 97-ish percent saturation. Here's our saturation curve, or axis, I should say. So we're never at really 100%. We're closer to 97%. What about question three? What's the amount of blood, or sorry, what's the amount of oxygen that Charles's blood could actually carry? Again, draw a vertical line from about 95 to 100 millimeters of mercury. Go up until you hit the curve. And it says the quantity that we can actually carry. So now draw a horizontal line to the right. And I hit about 10 millimeters of mercury. 10 milliliters for every 100 milliliters of whole blood. In question four, I've already addressed this, Charles has a left shift. This reflects a hemoglobin that is more greedy, has higher affinity, is unwilling to let go of the remaining oxygen. 
And remember, he has 50% carbon monoxide poisoning. So that means out of his four heme groups, he has only two that are loaded with oxygen. And the remaining two are being held onto with greater affinity, less likely to let go. Next question says, if Charles's tissues dip, dip, dip down to about 20 millimeters of mercury, what's the amount of blood that he can actually, uh, what's the amount of oxygen from his blood that he can actually release? So if I draw a vertical line from 20 millimeters of mercury up to Charles's curve and then over, I get about 7.5 milliliters for every 100 milliliters of blood he transports. So if I subtract the difference from how much he can carry versus how much he has after release, that means he releases about 2.5 milliliters of oxygen for every 100 milliliters of whole blood. So the correct answer is C. And the next question we're asked to compare the affinity and actually indirectly the solubility of carbon monoxide compared to oxygen. If I go back to Charles's original values, his PCO was 0.4 and his oxygen was 95. If I divide 95 by 0.4, I get 238. So carbon monoxide has a solubility and affinity of 238 times more than oxygen. If we look at Charles's blood, he has 50% carbon monoxide poisoning. It's a 50-50 draw. And yet the partial pressures were 238 fold different. That's remarkable. The next question asks, would Charles have a difference in his breathing based on chemoreceptor mediated hyperventilation? Well, if you look at my lecture on chemoreceptors, you know that we have peripheral and we have central chemoreceptors. The peripheral, of course, are found. The peripheral, of course, are found in your carotid sinus and aortic arch. The central are found in the fourth ventricle. You learn from lecture that the peripheral preferentially looks at oxygen levels and the central preferentially binds to hydrogen, but hydrogen is not soluble across the blood brain barrier, but CO2 is. So indirectly, we get the hydrogen levels monitored by the carbon dioxide levels. So based on his gas pressures, Charles does not have a deviation in his O2 nor CO2 partial pressures. They're in normal range. So we would not expect to see a change in his ventilation because all of his, his <clears throat> other blood gases are normal that are being monitored by the peripheral and central? So the answer is D. Lastly, Charles's condition is fundamentally a problem with transport. Carbon monoxide binds to heme, and that means it's occupy occupying a spot where oxygen should be. How do we transport oxygen? It's either dissolved or bound to hemoglobin. How much is dissolved? That's according to Henry's law, which states that solubility, 
times the partial pressure dictates the concentration of a gas in liquid. The primary way we transport hemoglobin is bound, so the primary way we transport oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. So if some of our hemoglobin, specifically our heme, is bound to carbon monoxide, this fundamentally means we have a decrease in transport of oxygen. If we consider that the primary way we transport oxygen is bound to our heme, then Charles's disorder is analogous to a decreased oxygen carrying capacity. So that's the definition of anemia, a decreased oxygen carrying capacity. Which of the following would not help Charles? We can give Charles more oxygen. More oxygen means we increase the partial pressure in his alveoli, which should increase the partial pressure in his blood. That means we're pushing off carbon monoxide from his hemoglobin. We can actually give him a blood transfusion. Pure blood, by pure I mean not poisoned by carbon monoxide, would certainly help him. We could actually give him carbon dioxide to breathe. This would cause a right shift if you look at your oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curves. Anything we do that causes a more pronounced left shift would hurt Charles. He already has a left shift. If you look at your oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curves, Increasing the pH, making his blood more alkaline, would cause a greater left shift. This would not help Charles. B is the correct answer.